righty. Good morning. Good morning, Southside family. How are y'all doing today? Okay, let me try that again. How are y'all doing today? Awesome. Okay, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible says rejoice always. And so even though it's snowing outside and it's cold, I choose to rejoice. <laughs> and one of the cool things about, it's not really snowing, but snowing last night. But one of the cool things about, you know, when seasons change is that we have to be able to adapt to change, right? Just because I have all season tires doesn't mean I have to drive recklessly or like I normally do. And so I pray as we continue this season together, we adapt. We adapt to change and we rejoice always. So if you guys can just stand up with me, let us worship and rejoice in this season. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I pray. Rain or shine. Snow or no snow, Lord, you are always good. And you're always loving. And so, God, I pray that as we as we move through these seasons, God, we always fix our eyes on you. And so guide us and lead us to our days to come. Amen. Amen. Would you please remain standing as we begin to worship together this morning with the song, God So Loved. Come all you we Come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you love. God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son, to save us, whoever believes in him will live forever. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay God so 
your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting, God so loved the world. Hear my praise roar up 
the middle of the mystery. I raise the hallelujah. Fear you lost your hold on me. gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive sing a little louder sing a little
you this morning. I'm going to read from Matthew 18, 19 before we pray. It says, because I like to call God at his word. He said his word shall not return to him void without fulfilling what he has sent it. And this morning he says in Matthew 18, 19, again I tell you that if two of, of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done to you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. Amen. So we know that he's with us this morning. And it also tells us in Matthew 7, 7, that we should ask and we shall receive. Amen. We should seek and we shall find him. We should knock and he shall open. Amen. So with that, we are going to pray this morning. Please let us pray. Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we glorify you. Lord, we acknowledge you. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge your presence in our midst this morning. We thank you that you are already here. We feel you. We love you, Daddy. God, we know that you are our good, good Father. You are the one that you said in all our ways we should acknowledge you. We do that this morning. We thank you, we glorify your name. Father, you are mightier than the mightiest. You are bigger than the biggest. You are the most glorious God. You are the Abba Father. You are our Lord of Lords, our God of Gods, our Alpha and Omega, and our beginning and our, and our end. You are the I am that I am. You are the one that said we are two or three are gathered in your name. You are there. We thank you that you are in our midst this morning. We thank you because you said when we seek you, we shall find you. We thank you because we have found you this morning. You are the one that says if we agree on anything on earth, it shall be done on ev in heaven. We thank you because we are agreeing together this morning. Father, we thank you. We praise your name. We lift your name high above all other names. We say your name be glorified. Oh, Lord, we know we are sinners. We've fallen short of your glory. But you said by your word that if you ask for the forgiveness of our sin, you forgive us. You cleanse us. We thank you for forgiveness this morning. We thank you that no sin will come against our prayer this morning, both known and unknown. Father, we thank you for that. Lord, we know that we are your children and you are our daddy. And we cannot ask for bread and be given stone. Because of that, we've come to you this morning to ask, to seek, to knock, to find and receive. Lord, we are a needy generation. We are a needy 
people, we need you. We need you in all areas of our lives, in all aspects of our life. Our world needs you. Our nation, Canada, needs you. Our families need you. Our children need you, Lord. We need you for provision. We need you for healing. We need you for even our loved ones that are sick in body, soul, and seal, body, soul, and mind. We ask you that you come and heal our world this morning. We ask you that you come and heal our finances this morning. We ask you that you come and meet each and every one at our point of need this morning. We ask that you will come and be with our children this morning. We ask that you give wisdom to our leaders this morning. We ask you that you would know, you that knows all the hidden things, you know all the crooked things, you know all the things that need to be changed in our lives. To make us continue to conform to your image, we ask that that will be done for us this morning. We ask that you have come, even though our face are all shining and looking radiant this morning. We have needs. Sometimes needs that we can't even share with anybody. That it is only you that we are asking and talking to. We know that we might be smiling, but we have those things that we are worried about, that we are anxious about. We pray that you meet those needs this morning. All those baggages that we brought here this morning, we are leaving them at the altar. None of us is going to take it back home in the morning, today, this morning, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we want to go out of here today renewed, refreshed, rebranded, so that anybody that sees us will know that we've had an encounter with you. Father, we pray that all the things that needs to make us a better person. All the things that needs to draw us closer to you. All the things that need to make people see us and know that we are your children will be granted unto us this morning. We pray that as we live here today, Lord, later, you will be the one to show us and direct us all the days of our lives. We will not do anything outside of your will. Father, we commit everything that we will do today, again, onto your hands. That when we hear, we will be hearing directly from your throne of grace. You'll be speaking to us, Lord, to change life. That even those who will listen to us online that do not know you, or here that need to receive you or receive you afresh, will be filled this morning. Father, we thank you because you are good, good God. Father, for our children that need you in different areas of their lives. And those that have gone astray from you, Father, you draw them closer to you. You bring them back to the fold in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because you are good. We thank you because you are a good, good Father. We thank you because of the answered prayers. We thank you because of your healing virtue that is falling upon everyone right now. We thank you for your spiritual healing. Emotional, physical, financial, marital, that is falling through over everybody this morning. Father, we thank you again because you are God. We thank you because you are our Lord. We thank you because you said in everything we should give thanks. We thank you because you said in everything we should put you first. We thank you because of all the areas of our lives that needs your being first in this morning. So that, Lord, in the end, none of us will miss heaven that you've let us know what to do. Will give us the word in season when we need to talk to people. That will continue to be your hands extended in this dying world. That will continue to win souls for your kingdom. Father, thank you again. We appreciate you. We glorify you. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. And in this token... I want everybody to love on each other. Warm welcome to each and every one. Hug, shake hands, elbow, and greet each and everybody. Please welcome and greet everyone. Thank you, Father.
Good morning, Southside. While everybody is finding their ways back to their seats, because it takes the Southside people a long time to greet one another, there's so much love here. Um, I just wanted to welcome everybody, and particularly to welcome everybody who is new, whether you're joining us online for the first time or whether you are joining us in-house. And if you are new to Southside, you will see in the seat back in front of you a card that looks like this. We would love it if you would fill it out, return it to one of our amazing hospitality team members um, at the back on your way out, and we have a little gift for you. Um, if there's anything we can pray for, there is an opportunity to indicate that on the card, and we would just uh, love to know who you are and uh, something more about you. Um, I would also like to thank each and every one of you who have been so generous with your tithes and offerings. It goes so far um, within our community and within our country and within our world of meeting needs for many people. So we appreciate your generosity. There are a couple of ways to give. If you are on site, you will see some boxes here. Um, and again, if you're having trouble locating that, just ask one of our hospitality team. You can also give online, and that link is at our website at www.southsidewc.com. Um, we have a couple of opportunities for you to sign up. Um, there is a men's breakfast that is happening on December the 3rd. I know lots of you have already signed up for this. It's an awesome opportunity to be fed physically, and I happen to know someone who's cooking some of the food, so I promise you it'll be great. Um, and to be fed spiritually, because I know there's going to be a speaker who will be amazing. It's a great opportunity to fellowship together and to worship together. Uh, fathers, bring your sons Grandfathers, bring your grandsons. It is for men of all ages, and I promise you'll have a wonderful time. There is a sign-up table at the back. It's strategically placed where you've been hanging up your coats, so you need to go right past it. And so sign up if you have not already. Also at the sign-up table, there is an opportunity to sign up to help with our Christmas Hope program. If you're new to Southside, um, we are quite involved in the community by assisting people who need a helping hand um, with Christmas gifts for their children and also for food, and just really sharing God's love um, with the community in both word and deed through this program. It does require a lot of helping hands though. There are opportunities to do some driving, um, to do some sorting of toys and food, um, to deliver hampers to seniors, to be here on the days that the community will be coming through and helping to greet them and interact with them. And I mean, there's, there's something for all ages. You can serve together as families. Um, we are going to be putting Christmas cards into each of the hampers. So if you'd like to come and sign Christmas cards and pray over those cards, really there's something for people of all ages to help out with. So um, please take a look at the sign-up sheet out at the table as well and indicate where you might be able to serve. Also part of that, um, in the month of December, I know Pastor Josh mentioned at prayer on Monday night uh, that he had had a meeting with the new administration over at Falby School and that there is an opportunity to assist again over there and do some outreach with the Healthy Snack Program and we're potentially going to be doing a pancake breakfast with everybody there at the school on the 13th of December. So there is a sign-up sheet if you'd like to help with that prior to Christmas as well. And now I will turn it over to Pastor Josh, who is going to bring an amazing word today. Thank you, Pastor Melanie. Well, uh, it doesn't feel like Christmas should be upon us, but Christmas is upon us because on Friday we actually got our first 
delivery of Christmas toys from uh, the Durham Police Department. And so it's here. And when Pastor Melanie is saying that we need help, we need help. And again, as your lead pastor, I want to encourage each person to do your part in some way. Uh, what a great opportunity we have to love our community this Christmas season by doing a number of different things. And uh, there is so much different things that you can get involved with that if you want to, uh, yeah, to just learn more about that, please uh, see, see Pastor Melanie and our volunteers at the back in the foyer following the service. Well, this morning um, we are continuing our series uh, called Rebuilding the People. And, uh, and as you know, many of you know, we've been uh, looking through Nehemiah, the second half of it, chapters 8 through 13 over the last few weeks, as we've been discussing how we can strengthen and rebuild the spiritual foundations in people's lives. Although God uh, used Nehemiah to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, it's vital that the Jewish people and us rebuild our spiritual foundations as well. And so a couple weeks ago, we talked from Nehemiah chapter 8 about a return to God's word. And we talked about how the word of God needs to have a, a place in our life to teach us and to correct us, to rebuke us, and to train us up in all the ways of the Lord. Last Sunday, we talked from Nehemiah chapter 9. And we challenged ourselves to pursue that revived spirit. And that revived spirit comes when we, when we do the hard work of confessing our sins before the Lord and, and receiving and experiencing that forgiveness. Well, this morning we're looking at Nehemiah chapter 10. And it's a call to a renewed commitment. A renewed commitment. So, as you know, the Jewish people had returned for this dedication service that took place earlier in their, their month, and then they went through the Festival of Booths, and now they've gathered back together again as they're looking to take another step in rebuilding their spiritual foundations. And the Jewish community comes together, and they make a renewed commitment before the Lord. They make a renewed commitment as a community that they're going to serve the Lord faithfully. They recognize that in order for us to be the people that God's called us to be, that this spiritual foundation that we're looking to build, there has to be a commitment that we make. Now, many people today, when you hear that word commitment, you know, there's like a twitch that happens in us. We don't really like that, that word. And in fact, in many cases, we try to avoid commitment. Or, you know, situations that require it. It seems like commitment is something that our uh, community is increasingly devaluing. Uh, you know, like, think about it. For, for the last number of years, marriage has been decreasing. Marriage rates have been decreasing every single year in Canada. Uh, there, there's this trend, right? That fewer and fewer people are getting married every single year. When, when 25 to 34-year-olds uh, who were in a relationship were, were asked, they would prefer to simply live with someone rather than to marry them. There's a devaluing of commitment in our society. People don't want to feel trapped. They don't want to feel tied down. Commitment often brings a new level of accountability. And people don't like that word either. Think about... The telecommunication companies, right? It used to be that, you know, they would lock you into these two or three long year sort of um, contracts. And, 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 and they've even had to change as, as the culture has realized that we don't want to be locked in those things anymore. And so, so lots of times they, you know, you might get a cell phone that you have to pay off. And if you leave your plan, you have to pay back the cell phone. But, but we're not locked in anymore because people don't want commitments. And sometimes we act like this, even avoiding commitment in our faith with God. We love God and we want relationship with Him, but we avoid commitment whenever possible. We like following Jesus if it's on our terms, if, if it's what we want, and if we still have the power to, to get out if we need to. We know what God expects, 
because of his word, but we're not willing to submit and to commit to it. And rather than allowing commitment to open the door to experience a whole bunch of new growth and many more blessings from God, we choose to sort of be wishy-washy in our faith rather than digging down deep and making commitments before the Lord. Well, the Jewish people had returned to Jerusalem, and again, they'd experienced the miraculous hand of, of God helping them rebuild the walls. And now they want to experience that rebuilt spiritual foundation. And so they read from the word, that was Nehemiah 8, and they confessed their sins, Nehemiah 9. And then the next natural progression in this story is for them to commit, to do things differently before the Lord. That's today, Nehemiah chapter 10. So they decided as a community that they were actually going to make an agreement, to write an agreement to the Lord for their community to follow and commit to God. Nehemiah 9 uh, verses 38 says this, in view of all of this, we are making a binding agreement, putting it in writing, and our leaders, our Levites, and our priests are affixing their seals to it. So in view of all the things that they've discovered, from digging into God's word, they've decided that they're going to set a new standard for their society. They're going to make a new commitment before the Lord to follow him faithfully. Can I tell you, commitment is actually a very powerful thing. And I believe that it opens the door for us to experience growth and God's blessing. See, rather than focusing in on all the worries that sort of we allow to stir in our hearts when we think about commitment, you know, feeling trapped or feeling like, oh, I don't know if I want to be held accountable, we should recognize that commitment creates opportunities for us to grow and to receive God's blessing. Although, although people tend to avoid or are hesitant towards commitment, do you know that committed people are actually coveted by all? They are, right? Like when you go for an interview for a job, businesses are looking for people who are devoted who are committed to using their enthusiasm and their loyalty and their ideas to, to do the job that they've been hired to do. Think about husbands and wives. We're looking for people that are committed to one another, to grow and to make sure that the relationship is healthy. Children find peace knowing that their parents are committed to them. Teachers want to see students that are committed to growing and learning, and students want to see teachers who are, who are able to teach and committed to coaching and helping them in the learning process. If, if you play sports, you're looking for teammates who are committed to practicing and, and to winning. Even churches need people who are willing to commit to engage in the mission of God. So although many people in our society today avoid commitment, Commitment's actually a great thing. And when commitment happens, all these examples that we've just shared, we have the opportunity to grow and to experience God's blessing. On top of that, we, we really should embrace commitment because God wants us to commit. The Lord desires his creation to be committed to him with their heart, with their soul, with their minds, with every part of, of them. Now, he allows us to have free will because commitment is a choice. It's not something we're forced into. Commitment is a choice that we get to make. But God knows that we were designed to be in a committed relationship with him. And if we'll simply step into those commitments, we can experience true fulfillment and satisfaction in life. Proverbs instructs us to Commit our lives to God. It says this in Proverbs 3, 5 to 8. You're probably familiar with this passage. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit. Some versions say acknowledge. We could probably put commit there. In all your ways, submit to him. And he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your 
body and nourishment to your bones. So, friends, commitment is a good thing and will help you to experience all of God's blessings for you. So the, the, the Jewish people decided that they were going to make this binding agreement. They were going to make a written agreement for their community before the Lord. And they sealed it with the seal from the leaders and the Levites and the priests. And the first 28 verses of Nehemiah chapter 10 is basically a list. A list of everybody who, who signed this community agreement. The people were so committed to following God that they actually created a legal document to sign by their leaders and their people to bring that before the Lord. Within that document, there was four commitments that they made, and we're going to look at those with the remaining time that we have today and and see how that relates to, to our lives today. So Nehemiah 10, verses 29, says this, All these now join their fellow Israelites, the nobles, and bind themselves with a curse, And an oath to follow uh, the law of God given through Moses, the servant of God, and to obey carefully all the commands, regulations, and decrees of the Lord our God. So the first commitment that the uh, Jewish people made was to follow and obey God's word. Now, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, the importance of God's Word uh, in our lives. And again, if you missed that sermon, you can always go back online on YouTube and you can watch that. But let me just make a couple comments uh, here about this first commitment that the people made. See, the people recognized the importance of building their community around God's Word. They had seen a pattern emerge in their fathers and their ancestors as they had moved away from following and obeying God's word. And they saw what happened. It led towards bad things happening, curses, being oppressed, being, um, being held in captivity. They saw what happened when, when they turned away from God and when they abandoned God's word. So they, they rebuilt their spiritual foundation and they made a commitment that they were going to follow and obey God's word. If God was truly going to be at the center of this new community that was emerging, there needed to be this commitment among the people to follow and obey God's word. You know, Canada throughout the years has experienced many blessings. And despite the challenges that we face today, we still live in a, in, in a wonderful country compared to many countries around the world. And part of the reason of that is that all the way back at the beginning, Canada was built around some of these principles that we find in God's Word. And you've seen it as we've started to drift away from those principles. Canada has maybe experienced some more challenges, and it's been more difficult. See, if we start to obey what we think is right in our eyes rather than what God sees as right, we, we face trouble. When, when, when people abandon an agreed-upon moral standard and start doing what they think is right, we face challenges. And the Jewish people knew this. They had seen it in their fathers and in their ancestors that they had moved away from obeying God's word and they saw all the challenges that happened because of that. So they invited the people to make a commitment to follow God and obey God's word. And they agreed to receive the the blessings that would come from that. And they also agreed to receive the curse or the troubles that would come if they chose not to obey God's word. But they chose. They chose that day to follow and obey God's word. You know, it's been a couple weeks since we had that message about a return to God's word. What did you end up doing with that message? Have you been reading and and understanding God's word so that you'll know how to obey it? Or did you continue to ignore and neglect God's word in your life? If we want to be the types of people that are rebuilding a spiritual foundation in our lives, we need to follow and obey God's word. The second commitment that the Jewish people made was to be set apart as holy. To be set apart as holy. 
Nehemiah 10 verse 30 says, We promise not to give our daughters in marriage to the people around us or take their daughters for our sons. See, one of the challenges that was happening during this, this time is that people had uh, begin marrying from all kinds of different nations. And the challenge wasn't so much the cultural uh, things that, that come when you, you marry someone from another nation, but it was the religious differences that was causing all kinds of turmoil within, within families and among the Jewish community. See, before Jesus came and made a way for us all to come into relationship with him, Yahweh, or God, was, was almost exclusively followed by the Jewish people. So other nations would have their own gods, right? They'd have a carved image, or they'd have some kind of idol, or some kind of, some kind of thing in their house that would serve as, as their god, and they followed that. And the normal practice was that when uh, someone would get married with someone of another faith, they would bring all of their gods with them into the house, and now that family would serve all those, all those gods. One spouse would bring a god and, 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 and try to combine it with, with Yahweh and God. But we know from the scriptures, we know from what the Bible says, that, that God says we should have no other gods except him. And so there was this challenge that was happening among the Jewish people that, that they were compromising their faith because they were all of a sudden sort of giving in to what these other small g gods would, would want. And as a community, they saw how that had caused them to drift away from what God actually intended them. And so they made this commitment. We're going to, in a sense, marry people or we're going to set ourselves apart to make sure that the God, Yahweh, is the one that is being served in our, in our families. So what was happening was that the Jewish people, like I said, were compromising. And they're allowing these other gods to come into our homes. And, and whenever we try or whenever we allow gods, uh, these, these other small g gods to come into our hearts, there's a battle that happens for commitment in our hearts. So the Jewish people, they wrote out this commitment before the Lord. That they were going to set themselves apart as being holy. Well, as, as Christians today, God has called us to set ourselves apart. As holy, to recognize that God desires that we wouldn't pollute our, our hearts with sin, we wouldn't pollute our hearts with all the things that the world says we should do, but we should commit our ways and our hearts to God, to live in a way that's holy and pleasing to Him. Romans 12, 1 to 2, this is familiar to you, but it says this, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good pleasing, and perfect will. Church, I want to challenge you today to set yourself apart as holy. And just as the Jewish people during Nehemiah's time made a commitment to live holy before the Lord, I want you today in your hearts to make a commitment that you're going to live righteously before God, that you're going to live the way that he's called you to live. Every day, we have opportunities to do what seems right in our eyes. And we often do that because we're all sinners. But I want to encourage you today to choose to do what God says is right, even when it's difficult. Every day we have opportunity to lie, to cheat, to steal, rather than to be honest before God and others. We hate or judge or look down on others rather than choosing to love people. And we engage in sinful behavior that, that maybe gives us a temporary satisfaction rather than to set ourselves apart and be disciplined and obey God. And I urge you, as Paul urges us in Romans 12, to set yourself apart as holy and pleasing to God because this is your true act of worship. And so when the world tells us to conform, I want you to commit to God that you'll do things his way and that you'll set yourself apart 
as holy. The third commitment that the Jewish people made was to observe the Sabbath. Observe the Sabbath. Now, the Sabbath, if you don't know that word, the Sabbath is a day of rest. It's like a day off, right? In the creation story, we see that, that God created for six days, and on the seventh day, he rested. And if God needed to rest, then all of us need to have that, that day where we can rest. And so God encouraged the people all throughout the scriptures to practice Sabbath-keeping, to, to take that day to rest and to refill your tank. And the Jewish people knew that if they were going to be healthy and strong physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, relationally, that they needed to observe the Sabbath and commit to making that a priority in their lives. Nehemiah 10 verse 31 says, When the neighboring people bring merchandise or grain to sell on the Sabbath, we will not buy from them on the Sabbath or on any holy day. Even, um, and, and, and then every seventh year, we will forgo working the land and will cancel all debts. So, so this verse highlights this tension that they felt and we all feel about sort of Sabbath keeping and maybe why sometimes we don't keep Sabbath. See, from the perspective of some of these people or even the world, they say, well, why would you take a day off? Here's an opportunity to, to make more money or to, or to, or to get more benefits. And, but yet the Jewish people knew the benefits of following God's word and, and taking that day off. And so they, they closed their businesses on their Sabbath. Even though there was foreign businesses that would have loved to trade. And even though there could have been opportunity to make money. And even though maybe they lost some revenue. So many Jewish businesses were open seven days a week to maximize profits and opportunities. But as the Jewish people desired to rebuild the spiritual foundations, they chose to trust God with even their businesses, and they committed to honoring and observing the Sabbath. You know, there's a temptation that we all face even today to, to run life at such a high pace. Maybe you've Maybe you've experienced that. We're always on the go. We're always running. Life is, is happening so fast. Even someone, even someone today said, how was your week? And I said, uh, you know, I'm trying to think. I, and the first thing I said, it was busy. Because that's just everybody's life these, these days. Our lives are so busy that sometimes we don't even have time to sleep. We don't even sleep as much as we, we need to. For many of us, if we don't have that early morning coffee, we can't even function for the day. Friends, there's a blessing that comes when we, when we observe and keep the Sabbath. Our physical health, our mental health, our emotional and, and, and spiritual and relational health is all renewed when we, when we listen to God and follow his commands. I remember when I first started sort of practicing observing Sabbath, I was in Bible college. It was, uh, I think it was my second or my third year. I was, I was pastoring part-time at, uh, at the time as well. And, and I chose that I was going to take a day. It was Fridays. I was going to take Friday to uh, just do whatever would fill Josh's tank. Whether that's read a book or play some sports or be outside or do whatever. I was going to refill my tank spiritually, relationally, and physically. At first, I thought to myself, well, how can I even do that? You know, I had so many assignments, and I, and I had commitments at the church. But do you know what I learned as I sort of uh, stayed the course and I followed that? Is that God helps you, and he blesses you when you honor his, his word. I remember sitting in my, in my room one day. It was a Thursday. I was getting ready for my Sabbath, and I had this huge assignment that was probably worth the majority of, of my mark, and it was due on Monday, and I felt like I was behind, and, and I remember thinking to myself, well, I probably need Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to get this assignment done. And in my heart, I was just like, no, I'm going to honor this Sabbath, and I'm going to do what I want to do today that will just fill my tank and help me to connect with God. And God taught me a very valuable thing that, that weekend. On Saturday, I, I woke up early, I had breakfast, and I sat down to do this major assignment. And my focus was so much clearer 
The ability to work uh, straight through without, without stopping was there. And all of a sudden, I finished that assignment in half the time. And I, and I attributed it to saying, I took some time to actually refill myself. And God's now helped me and blessed me to get this assignment that if I would have kept going on fumes, it probably would have taken me the whole weekend. But instead, God showed me, Josh, if you'll just do what I instruct you to do, I'll take care of you and I'll bless you. And I ended up doing well, I think, even on that assignment. But, but, but we need to remember. We need to remember the benefits that can come from observing the Sabbath. So even if that doesn't make sense to the world, maybe they say, what do you mean you want a day off? What do you mean you can't work this day? Whatever the Sabbath is to you, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a Sunday. For many of you, it is Sunday. For me, Sabbath is not a Sunday. I, I, I work on Sunday. But Friday is my Sabbath, and I try to guard that to the best of my ability. So even when the world says, ah, don't, don't worry about that, you don't need to take a day off. Let me encourage you, stay committed. Stay committed to honoring and keeping the Sabbath. Because I believe that when you do it God's way, he opens the door for his blessings to be received. The fourth and final commitment that the Jewish people made was to support God's work. To support God's work. The last eight verses in Nehemiah 10 outline uh, the different ways that the people committed to supporting uh, God's work. We won't go through them all in detail, but, but essentially there were six different tithes and offerings that the people committed to giving so that uh, God's work could advance. We're just going to read one verse here, uh, Nehemiah 10, verse 37. Moreover, uh, we will bring to the storerooms of the house of our God, to the priests, the first of our ground meal, of our grain offerings, of the first of all of our trees, and of our new wine and olive oil, and we will bring a tenth of our crops to the Levites, for it is the Levites who collect the tithes in all the towns where we work. So there was this understanding among God's people that it was God's people who resource God's work. And Nehemiah 10, like I said, 32 to 39, outlines these different kinds of ways that people committed to supporting God's work. They gave to the daily operations of the activities and temples that were, carried out of, that were carried out within the temple. That's verses 32 to 33. Each family was assigned a specific time of the year where they would provide the wood that was necessary for the burnt offerings of that time. That's, that's verse 34. When the harvest was, was yielded, the first and best fruits from the crop were presented to God. That's verse 35. The firstborn child was dedicated before the Lord to be used for, for his service in whatever way God saw fit. That's, that's verse 36. A tithe, 10% uh, of the income of, of a family was given each year. That's verse 37 to 39. And the work of the Lord, they felt, was to not be neglected. And so the people committed to supporting God's work. I want to challenge you today to be faithful or to remain faithful in giving of the Lord's tithes and our offerings. Listen, I, I know the day that we live in. I feel it too. Uh, everything's a lot more expensive and we think, how do I possibly have enough money to remain faithful to God? Everything's more expensive. Resources are in short order. But one thing I've learned about God over the years is that he takes care of me in the good and the bad times. There's been some seasons in my life where uh, I've been basically living off the fumes of the bank account. I remember when Allie and I first got married and uh, we bought a house. And then shortly after that, we both decided to go back to school and living off one income. And uh, it was tight times. We, I don't think we went out to eat for a year. We just sort of tried to save all the money that we could. But I remember how faithful God was. There was still food in my fridge. There was still money in my bank account, and he took care of us even when things were hard. And we said, no, we're still going to be faithful. <laughs> At the time, our church was going through a building campaign, and I remember us even committing to a building campaign and giving extra money to, to get into that building. And, but yet God took care of us. And I'm so thankful for my parents who taught me, Josh, never rob God. Always give him what 
belongs to him. And you'll notice when I say, you know, when I thank you for giving the Lord's tithes and your offerings, I always say it the same way. Maybe you've noticed that. It's the Lord's tithe. It's not your tithe. It's the Lord's tithe because that's a debt that belongs to him, right? Our offerings are what we give above and over our tithes. And so you always hear me say, it's the Lord's tithe because I want to teach you that the scriptures tell us that we are to be faithful in that, in that way. Now, when you do that and you're faithful, guess what? God blesses you. It doesn't always come back. It'd be nice if it always came back with, with more money back to me when I give. It, it doesn't always work out like that. I am thankful for living in Canada where I get a nice tax receipt at the end of the year from, from the government when you give to a charity. But uh, that's not always how it works because God's bigger than that. I've seen God's blessing come in, in, in health, in favor, in opportunities, in protection, and so on. Can I tell you a story? I, I, I remember when I bought my, my blue van. I'm still driving it today. Shortly after I bought it, I bought it used, um, the transmission went. Now, any of you who um, know about transmissions, like that's, that's a pretty expensive thing to fix on the car. And I remember when it went and I'm sitting at the side of the road, I thought, oh, great. Here's $3,000 that I have to spend now to fix my transmission. I just got the van, so it didn't make sense to, um, you know, just say, well, because lots of times when the transmission goes, you just get a new car. Uh, I was like, I just got the car, so I have to get it fixed. And so I take it to the mechanics, and I'll tell you how delighted I was when I got the phone call from the mechanic and say, Josh, did you know that your warranty covers you for 100, up to 100,000 kilometers, and you actually have 98,000 kilometers? <laughs> So uh, your, your bill is going to be covered, and it's going to be free by the warranty. I got off the phone, and I said, God, I know things don't happen for an accident. Thank you that you've blessed me by causing that transmission to go when it went so that it didn't cost me anything. And I see that as a direct correlation that I've never robbed God. I've always tried to bless him and be obedient to him, and he's taken care of me along the way. Now, I want to tell you, God doesn't owe you anything. Please. I always say that to my kids. I say, God doesn't owe you anything. Right? We give because God asks us to give. But there is a blessing that comes when we give of the Lord's tithe and our offerings. It's a blessing that comes because you're being obedient, not because of the amount that you give. You just have to look at, at, at uh, the scriptures when the lady gave just those two coins. She gave out of... Out of out of what she had as opposed to out of her abundance. And so I, I, I give my offerings not because I'm, you know, trying to be generous or trying to get something back, but because I'm trying to store up treasures in heaven. I don't give to get, but when I do give, God often blesses me for being obedient. So the Jewish people, they committed to rebuilding their spiritual foundations in their society, and they committed to giving. And I'm encouraging you today to either be faithful or to remain faithful in giving of the Lord's tithe and our offerings, even when challenges come our way. I want to invite the band back as we prepare to close today. Here's the question that I want to ask you as we wrap up this message today. How do you need to commit to God? How do you need to commit to God today? Can I remind you, commitment is a good thing. It's a good thing. It's what God desires us to do. So how do you need to commit to God? Maybe you're here today and, uh, you know, as I've been speaking and you've just realized that you haven't even committed your life to Jesus. You haven't accepted that gift of free salvation that comes. And I want to take a moment just to give you an opportunity to receive that if you'd like that. So with, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I just want to have a moment with those that want to take that step to commit their lives to Jesus, to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If there's someone here today that say, Pastor Josh, I, I, I know that part of the challenges that I'm facing in my life is because I'm trying to do it my way. I'm trying to do it without God at the center of my life, but I know that I need to invite him into my heart to forgive my sin, to cleanse me, and to be the leader of my life so that I can do things his way. If, if you'd like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, I just ask you with every head bowed, every eye closed, just to simply lift your hand so I can see it. I want to know who I can pray for today. Yeah, I see that hand. Someone else? Anyone else? Again, our church is so good at encouraging us. Let's, let's just pray this prayer out together. 
Lord Jesus, thank you that you saved me. Thank you that you forgive me. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I put you as the leader in my heart and my life. So God, help me this week to follow you wholeheartedly and to do what's right in your eyes. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, for the rest of us today, I want to challenge you to make some commitments before the Lord as we sing this song of response together in a moment. Maybe you need to commit, like I said earlier, to following and obeying God's word. Or perhaps you need to commit to setting yourself apart as holy and rather doing all the things that the world says to conform to. You said, no, I'm going to set myself apart as, as holy. Maybe you've been running too fast and you need to honor and observe the Sabbath. Or perhaps you need to start committing to supporting God's work by honoring God with his tithes and our offerings. I'm not sure how God's been tugging at your heart today and what he's been speaking to you. But again, I want to ask you this question today. How do you need to commit to God? I want to invite you to stand with me as we sing this song of response. I want to encourage you again as we sing this to make a commitment before the Lord. God is trustworthy. He'll take care of us as we remain committed to him. And so even when things get dark, as this song says, stay committed to God because he is our lighthouse. So let's sing this song and then we're going to conclude our service in just a moment.
do something just a little different before I let you go tonight, or tonight, this morning. Um, the Jewish people in Nehemiah 10, they wrote out a commitment. Now, we're not going to write out anything or, or cause you to sign anything to get out today, but I thought it would be uh, a good thing, especially as Southside, as we're trying to rebuild that spiritual foundations, that we would make some commitments together today. And so I want to read you a couple or four statements based on the four things that the, that, that the Jewish people committed to. And if, if you're in agreement with these statements today, I want us as a church to just respond with, we will, okay? And so, Southside Church, will you commit to following and obeying God's word, even when it's difficult and requires trust? We will. Will you set apart yourself to be holy and strive to walk in a way that's righteous before God and others? Will you commit to honoring the Sabbath so that you can be refueled as God desires? And will you commit to supporting God's mission with your time, energy, and resources so that the gospel of Jesus can be spread far and wide? Lord, you've heard us today. Our heart's desire is that we would please you, God, with our lives. And this church's desire is that, Lord, we would be that lighthouse that, that we just sang about, a beacon of hope in our community. And so, Lord, I pray that as you continue to do the work in our lives of rebuilding the spiritual foundations, Lord, I pray that our community would start to see a group of people that are committed to following your ways and pleasing you with our lives. And so, Lord, as we've made these commitments before you today as a church, Lord, help us to follow through with them. Help us to think about them. Lord, when we cross over the line or when we do something that we, that we know isn't right, Lord, I pray that we'd be quick to come back into alignment with what you desire for us and our church. And so, Lord, I pray a blessing over your people today. I pray you'd give them a great week ahead. And, Lord, you'd help us to continue walking in the ways that you've called us to. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great rest of uh, the weekend. We'll see you tomorrow night for prayer. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you.